Scott Derrickson returns to horror, and Ethan Hawke is the creepy guy that lives down the street. Is the black phone good? Let's talk about it. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. I love a good original horror film, and the black phone had me intrigued with the trailers. We're going to get into a review, but I need you guys in the comments down below. Are you a fan of Scott Derrickson as a horror director? And what's the best horror movie of the year so far? Is it this one? Let's do it. After being abducted by a child killer and locked in a soundproof basement, a 13-year-old boy starts receiving phone calls on a disconnected phone from the killer's previous victims. As always, we're going to start with the rating. This film is rated R for violence, bloody images, language, and some drug use. And this is one of those movies that, as I was watching, started to remind me of that Stephen King-esque type of story. It comes to mind all throughout the film. Not just because it's a creepy dude and kids are terrified and these kidnappings continue to happen. Less supernatural than it, obviously, but the whole receiving phone calls from the dead victims thing, that's fairly supernatural. Is there a twist to that or is it as it seems? Well, I don't want to dive too much into those details, but I will start with Ethan Hawke portraying once again, this It the Clown type of character, except there's this grounded realism to it that makes it almost just as, if not more, terrifying because it feels like something that could and probably has happened in real life. And that, for me, especially when you're dealing with children getting kidnapped, that is one of the scariest things you can give us on screen. I often go back to the movie Prisoners. Not even a horror movie, but there are horrific elements because of what's happening to these kids. And that's the same case here. They do not pull any punches when it comes to the grounded realism of that. But going beyond that realism and veering into the supernatural is a tough task. But for someone like a Scott Derrickson who has done this before uh, in a different way with a movie like Sinister, but something that paid off oh so well, I feel that same passion in this project and this film brings about fear in a different way it often tries to go for that jump scare or attempts to scare you in more of a cliche horror way and that's one of my issues with the film is when the story gets to that point it's about to take that next step it never quite does and I felt something lacking from that and when they try to push that oh here's something scary and there's something scary that's when the movie for me wasn't as scary as maybe it needed to be. What scares you is the premise. What scares you is what's happening around town. And I love the establishment of lore here. This has been happening. It's continuing to happen. It's not something that's been going on for 50 to 100 years. But people are terrified because these kids continue to disappear. And then we join our main characters, a brother and his sister, Finney and Gwen. I think both performances are very compelling. Madeline McGraw specifically, she brings about some humor out of certain situations, which I thought was fantastic. And uh, the way that Mason, who plays Finney, plays off of Ethan Hawke, who is, of course, the Grabber, that's what the kids call him, right? When we get those interactions, they're oh so satisfying. He's creepy, that's wonderful, it works so well. There is also this storyline with his younger sister, who again, is a prominent character throughout the film. She is able to do something, say, conjure something up throughout the movie, and we're given a brief idea as to the why and the what this is all about, and I, I think a lot of people would argue, well, they give you just enough. In my opinion, I didn't get enough with that. And then we go over to the brother who conveniently falls into things at times and kind of taps into that supernatural world. But I feel as if that was a crucial aspect of the story that needed more development. My wife and I both walked out, and she's a massive horror fan, more than me, to be honest with you. And she said, I enjoyed it but I did feel something missing. And we both agreed that a lot of it spawned from that. And even though we get lore from this town, I do wish there was a little more there. The way they go about these phone calls and the supernatural imagery that comes from that and some of the practical effects, which are haunting. And again, that's where those scares come from. That worked extremely well for me, but it did feel like there was a bit of a disconnect. And it's funny because throughout the buildup and the interactions with this young man and his peers, AKA a lot of the kids at school who bully him, 
I was sitting and waiting on these kidnappings to happen and these interactions to play out between he and Hawk. But once we get there, they'll happen every now and then. But there were more than a few lulls in this story that had me kind of, all right, when's it going to go down? Uh, to where I go back to the beginning of the story, and I actually really appreciate the buildup and the establishment uh, of who he is, that very strained relationship between these kids and their father, a little bit about their mother. I do look back and appreciate that first act way more now than I did while I was watching, because it did a great job of building these things up. Hey, before I give you guys my score, if you're here and you enjoyed this review, let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to drop that like. It helps the algorithm. The black phone thrives when its grounded scares have you on the edge of your Seat. The supernatural elements don't fully come together, but there is more than enough to creep audiences out. And if you're a fan of somewhat familiar but overall original horror movies, I think you're going to enjoy this one. It's worth a watch. Ethan Hawke is terrifying. I'm going at 73% with my score. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to come back for more reviews, more tier lists. And this weekend, I'm doing the best movies of the year so far since we're halfway through. All right, see you soon.